Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Astro Bloom Podcast. I'm your host, Vanya Banks, spiritual astrologer and healing guide. And today I have with me Cassandra Rosa, who is the founder of Fulfilled Femme Entrepreneur. Um, She has a course and a podcast as well that I've been a guest on before. And so it's a pleasure to have her on here to talk a little bit about her journey and how she supports uh, women in finding fulfillment in their lives. So welcome, Cassandra. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you today and the audience too. Awesome. I'm excited to get into all of the lovely details with you, but I always love to open up by, um, you know, having you first of all, introduce yourself, what it is that you do, how do you support people sort of at a high level. Um, And also, if you do know your big three in astrology, uh, as well as maybe your human design energy type, just so people can kind of understand where you're coming from energetically, and maybe be able to relate to you on that level. Yeah, I'd love to. So I am a certified coach and healer and intuitive business coach. And I really like to help women to create fulfilling lives and impactful businesses. I have a podcast called Fulfilled Female Entrepreneurs that Vanya was a guest on. It was an amazing episode. And I have a book as well, an award-winning book. It's called Now What? Create the Clarity to Achieve Your Dreams. And I really just, it makes my heart sing to talk about fulfillment. I think all of us have a greater purpose in this world. And we have a general idea of what life would look like with freedom and fulfillment. So I really love to ignite women to step into that fully, really clarify what that looks like, step into their most confident selves, and then start to carve the path of what that will look like so that we can all make the ripple effect on the world that we are all destined to. When it comes to astrology, I am a Cancer Sun, a Libra Moon, and a Virgo Rising, and I'm a manifester when it comes to human design. Ah, uh, <laughs> makes sense. I'm a manifester too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense uh, why we chose the path that we're on because of all that freedom we need, right, over mm-hmm. our own schedules. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. So, in terms of, I guess. Because I I always like to think of, you know, especially when you end up being uh, an entrepreneur and you kind of, you know, put together all of these various skills that you have and like the passions that you have, like there's always these breadcrumbs that kind of lead you to this path, right? Um, And I know that that's a pretty loaded question of like, how did you get to where you are now? But maybe what are some of the key moments that, you know, led you down this entrepreneur, uh, down this coaching path? Like why... I guess, what is your why in a lot of ways, right? Yeah, I love that question. I love talking about the why. And it's interesting from a young age, I knew I wanted to make a difference in the world. It was just like this thing innately inside of me. I didn't know what that meant. There was a lot of like question marks if there was like a thought bubble in my mind, but there's some kind of pull to help people and make a difference. So I thought I'd be like a teacher, psychologist. I went to school um, here in Canada for psychology. And then halfway through my degree, I felt like there was something more for me, but I didn't know what that was. So I ended up doing a bunch of traveling. I lived in Europe, did a study exchange and volunteered in Africa. And it just opened my mind outside of the bubble of North America and society and the societal norms that exist here. And I started to fall in love with mentorship when I was volunteering in Africa at an after school program. But when you get back into the bubble, when the you know experience was over, I came back and my family has an insurance business. And from a young age, they wanted me to take it over. And I thought, okay, you need to make a lot of money to be successful. Once you have money, then you can make an impact and you can help people, right? You can make a foundation. That was kind of my frame of mind. So I went to school to get my license to do insurance. I did really well. I was like the youngest woman in the office. But again, like when I was cold calling, there was this pull for more. And it was very strange because there was this pull for more, but I didn't know what it was. So when I would be explaining it to my family, they were like, what is it that you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know, just not this. I am supposed to help people. So I don't know if I was young and naive, but I ended up leaving insurance, just worked some marketing and sales jobs, and I fell into personal development. It was a complete accident. And I started to see that this was the way that I could be like the teacher and the psychologist almost in its own unique way, but on my terms with the freedom that I could travel and make a lasting impact without being a millionaire, 
right? A society kind of makes us put our dreams on the back seat, and I found that could be my path to do it. So uh, from the time of making the decision that I wanted to have my own business and become a coach within six months, I left my full-time nine to five job, took my laptop and traveled and was a coach. And it was like such a pinch me moment. I remember that moment of just being overcome with so so much emotion of complete gratitude for myself for taking that step and not knowing what it was and seeing how it all naturally fell into place and the universe supported me. So now this is year five of doing coaching and healing. And it's just been such a powerful journey that seeing those light bulb moments when you're helping people is just my favorite thing in the entire world. So that's the why that ignites me to move through entrepreneurship and all the stages of the highs and lows. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and it sounds like this why really also came from your own journey, right, of mm-hmm. being that person who didn't feel fulfilled mm-hmm. in kind of the prescribed, um, I guess, path that had been laid out in front of them. And mm-hmm. so it, I'm sure it took, you know, lots of courage to kind of step out of the bounds, out of the norm, out of the expectations of not just your family, but society in a lot of ways um and follow your own path and I think especially as a manifester you know we always have to go first (laughs) yes it uh but usually when we do and we inform properly then things hopefully fall into place right so it sounds like they really did for you and that's that's awesome yeah it took a lot of courage for sure and when you're saying about like the breadcrumbs like leading us there I feel like that was it. It was like the lack of clarity, like this pull, but like, what the heck am I even doing here? And it was the mental roadblocks that came from stepping outside of the comfort zone, stepping out of society, what my family wanted, what, you know, immigrant parents wanted for me. Um, And it was just like the how, finding my own authentic how and embracing all my gifts in the way that I could deliver my message with the world. So those were definitely the big breadcrumbs that allowed me to channel through all I'm meant to with all my coaching. So mm, I love that. Um, I feel like I can definitely relate to, you know, the immigrant parents comments because I, mm-hmm. I don't know if you were born in Canada, not that that matters, you know, mm-hmm. but I, I immigrated to Canada when I was 10 with my family. Mm-hmm. And so I think one of the biggest blocks for me in like stepping into this path always was yeah this conditioning especially like this familial conditioning of what success looks like Mm -hmm. um so I guess just thinking of you know people that might be in the in a similar situation to where you and I were um in this journey of almost being like a cycle breaker or you know healing the ancestral lineage in some ways doing the things that others maybe felt like they couldn't do or maybe they didn't want to do them right because they were okay with what was prescribed. Um, What are some of the, I guess, maybe uh, pieces of advice that you might give to someone who is in this position of like, not even, maybe not even having the clarity of like what they want to do, but just knowing and feeling that they're like, they're meant for more. Cause that is definitely something I resonate with deeply Mm -hmm. is my whole life. I felt like I was here to make a difference and I was always in helping professions like I worked in hospitality I worked at an animal clinic like I you know worked with clients in a lot of different uh, industries and I was always working with people or with animals I was always working to like help someone or to make a difference but it never felt fulfilling in the way that you know my work now does and so even without maybe having that clarity how do you how do you gather the courage to step out on your own, to follow your own path? Like, what does that look like? Or yeah. what did it look like for you? <laughs> I love that question. And I can, I was born here, but my dad came from Italy when he was really young, around around the same ages that you came here actually. And my family um, on my mom's side is all Italian too. So it was all like school, you know, getting the job, making a lot of money, getting the house, marriage, like the traditional, you know, the American dream, if you want to call it here in Canada. But um, in terms of forging that path and the advice, I think it's a lot. A thing that stops a lot of people from that fulfillment is this whole concept of like having clarity, having the path drawn out, knowing every step of the way so that there's like a sense of security and like a comfort zone. Because I think In terms of the way society set up, there's like school, there's job, like it's very methodical. 
So when you're stepping into entrepreneurship or something more, you're kind of looking for that, that path. And when that doesn't happen, we kind of get stuck in our own heads. So with the context of the situation of me presenting it that way, the rate, the reason that I do is we don't need all the answers. We don't need all the clarity. We don't need the complete path to be able to take action. I think that there's a lot of understanding, clarity, confidence built in just following that gut instinct. So if you feel like there's more that is meant for you, it's following that curiosity. It's saying yes to opportunities that are presented. It's leaning in to the question marks and not having the perfect path and just being lighthearted and having fun with it. Because I feel like when you're in that state of joy, that's when the opportunities will come your way. So instead of waiting for everything to take action, it's just taking action accordingly. And for a lot of us, that may mean that you are working a nine to five when you are on this path. So it's also being grateful for that, that career that might not be so fulfilling as it serves the purpose to give you that like security blanket to allow you to be lighthearted and be fun um, and take that approach accordingly. So I would say, say yes to the opportunities, take the action, even if you don't have the clarity and the perfect path. Um, and another thing to consider too, is just like trusting your gut. I think mm -hmm. We look for the security, we look for the outside, we try and please the ego by doing that. But I think all of us have a powerful intuition as spiritual beings. So it's really allowing your intuition to guide you every step of the way, instead of looking for everything on the outside as the path unfolds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's really great advice. I love that. Um, I, I think it's a lot of the times it also comes down to when you're in this space of like not necessarily having the clarity, right? I think the first step sometimes is even just like learning how to trust your intuition, right? Mm -hmm. Because I mm -hmm. think in the society that we've been raised in and also in, you know, some cultures specifically that do really rely on this like external validation, uh, you know, money above everything else because money is the only form of security that, you know, you can achieve in life. <laughs> um, I know that, I was raised in that sense, like money is everything, right? Because with money comes freedom. And of course, in the world that we live in, that is true in some ways. But at the same time, there's so much to be said for actually feeling fulfilled. <laughs> and I think that's where your intuition and your, your relationship to your intuition and understanding how it speaks to you uh, and how you can actually follow that gut feeling right comes in so that's definitely something that you know I work with my clients quite a bit because we focus on the moon sign we fo focus on the intuition is that something that you also help your clients with like because I find that can often be the first kind of block to actually following uh you know some of the things that, that they might want to do but are yeah really aware of. totally I resonate with that deeply and intuition is something that we do focus on because the way that I kind of walk my clients through the process is to become like your fulfilled femme. So like the most fulfilled, connected version of yourself, really deeply co-creating with the universe and your higher self on your path to entrepreneurship. So we focus on that clarity piece. So those question marks can start to be answered. We start to focus on embodying that confidence and connecting to your intuition so that you can be led by your intuition on the path. And when those ego moments come up, you know how to be able to collaborate with the ego and not be so judgy with it. Um, and then it really comes down to creating the business and showing up consistently for yourself and your mission. I think that that's a huge part of entrepreneurship that is often missed. That's why there's so many businesses that come and go. So it's being able to hold space for yourself every season of entrepreneurship because there definitely are many seasons that unfold. It's not just, you know, the 100K months that some coaches talk about online. It is a process, especially when you're so much in the work and in the brand, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think it's always, I think for all of us, it's that way. But especially as an entrepreneur, it's like a constant, like a, as a spiritual entre entre entrepreneur is what I wanted to say. Um, it's such a balance and such a dance between like the feminine and the masculine because you are the one creating and you're also the one putting things into action actually like 
following through on it, right? Unless you have, you know, assistants and whatever that do the work for you, but you still are the one that is being in that more feminine state of like following your intuition, uh, getting in touch with your creative energy, but then you're also having to like manifest that and actually put it into the world and put it into a concrete physical form. So it yeah. always seems to be kind of that balance between the two. And it sounds like the approach that you take really is uh, quite balanced in that sense as well. Yeah, it's a very big part of it, especially as when I started in the entrepreneurial space in 2019, it was still very hustle, hustle, money focused, um, go, go, go energy. And I experienced burnout when I started out um, just because I was working hard um, to bring my vision to light because it was so big and I was so clear of it. So when I experienced the burnout, I think that that was my gift from the universe as lots of entrepreneurs go through nowadays to understand how to maintain that balance and really take up your intuition to the next level so that it can be a song of dance of co-creation within you and then with the universe and whatever higher power you believe in. So, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, one of the other things that you just mentioned was, you know, having this nine to five and being grateful for it. And while you're sort of working on creating or birthing or working on your, you know, your entrepreneurship journey, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like, um, mm -hmm. are there any pieces of advice that you would give to people who are maybe in that space? Cause mm -hmm. I can definitely see them from my own experience and like from, you know, some of my clients experiences, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, how to kind of balance those things and, For maybe sure. when, and how to maybe know as a follow-up question, how to maybe know when is it time to scale down your nine to five to something more part-time perhaps. Yeah, for sure. So just to set, set the context, there was a time that I was working like five, six days a week at a nine to five, and then taking three courses and certifications and doing my business at the same time. So it was a lot going on. And there were stages and seasons where I was like, just fed up with the job. I was like, I'm over this. I want to be doing this as so many entrepreneurs do with the huge whys. You want to like jump out and like, get full time into the world. So that urgency is great. Um, and that why driving you is huge and so key um, when you are doing both. But I think it's also important to formulate your perspective in gratitude for the job that you're in, because it is the security blanket that will allow you to do both. So you're not launching a business from scarcity, because a lot of people, especially spiritual people can sense that. So give yourself permission to do both, change your perspective about the nine to five that you have so that you're in gratitude for it and see it as your security blanket as you are doing both um, and allow that why to drive you. So like having a vision board, like I have behind me uh, for everyone watching the video and listening to the podcast, I have a vision board or connecting with your dream life or affirming what it is that you want to stand into to keep you um, as focused as possible on that so that your why is leading you and igniting you to have that passion and to put in the effort because it is going to take a little bit effort. It is going to be a little bit uncomfortable in terms of scheduling to balance both, but just really knowing that it is a temporary season and really being in that gratitude space for it. And then in terms of taking the plunge and like moving on to the next level, once you have your method, once you have your clarity, once you have your process for your business, once you have um, your income replaced on a monthly basis, I, that was my kind of way to securely jump over without being in that scarcity of, hey, I need clients because I need to replace my income or I need to do this, right? So in that place, it was led by fulfillment and your why. So giving yourself permission um, to be in the season that you're in and letting it unfold naturally instead of holding yourself back or being caught up in the scarcity behind launching a business, I think is so important. For sure. Yeah. It's spoken like a true Virgo rising. I feel like it was a very <laughs> earthy, like, grounded <laughs> answer. Yeah. Uh, I love, uh, but, and, I, and that is totally what I also envisioned for my transition, but I guess I wanted to maybe piggyback on that and say, like, I absolutely love everything you mentioned. I think it's a great, like calculated way to know when to take the leap and everything. But I also just want to say for those people that might be maybe waiting for this to happen and 
are feeling more and more burnt out doing both things at once and are feeling like I can't actually like get the numbers that I want in my business until I leave this job until I scale back on you know this job because it's like draining all of the energy out of my life (laughs) sometimes it doesn't have to go according to plan right like for me I thought okay I'm gonna give my nine to five x amount of time and I'm gonna launch these specific things that I want to launch in my business and you know I'm gonna have x amount of money coming in every month and I wasn't at that place when I quit my job Mm -hmm. because I just got to the point where there was kind of a natural break in my contract and it just seemed like if not now when I felt like if I signed the contract and said I was going to extend my position because what had happened I was on a full-time contract basis Mm -hmm. and my contract was up and two months before my contract expired they offered me an extension for another two years and at that point I knew I wanted to leave like that year because I just couldn't like couldn't maintain both at once. I knew I needed to scale down to like part-time and I knew that they wouldn't uh, allow me to go part-time with the organization I was at. So at that point I was like, if I sign this, it's like telling the universe I want one thing while doing another thing, right? And so it was kind of like, okay, well, here I am, completely don't feel that secure or grounded in this decision, but it feels right at the same time. And I'm not going to say that's for everyone it definitely shook me to my core because I do have a lot of earth in my chart I do need like to kind of have a path laid out I do need to know that I have my bases covered right but Mm -hmm. at the same time it was just kind of what was necessary at that time right so definitely I would say Cassandra's (laughs) advice is number one but if it comes to the number two like to the situation that I had it's not wrong, right? It uh, it just unfolds how it's meant to for for you, right? So <laughs> yeah, let your intuition guide you. I think everybody's journey is going to be different. So allowing your intuition to guide you because it was funny. I was in a course and I took um, we did like a group meditation and it was like how to access your intuition and ask a question and see what the universe delivers. And I asked my intuition, so when am I going to leave? And I heard November 15th clear as day. And that's right before the peak season for my job. And I was freaking out. And I said, oh, my gosh, like, it can't be this is right before the busy season. Like, you know, it was not the plan that I thought it would work. I thought it was going to be the end of the year, right? I surrendered to it. My coach was like, just surrender to the way it's meant to unfold. And I go into work one day, my manager left, like quit. And I felt in my soul, this is the day that you need to resign. I go home, I resign. I send the email. I look at the calendar. What day is it? November 15th. So it's always going to like happen according to the divine plan. So I think it's also detaching for the way that you think it should be and not being egotistical and forcing the path, but allowing it to unfold the way it's meant to. And in addition, which I think resonates with your mission too, is this whole concept of amping up your self-care. So that might mean that you know, you have to say no to going out with friends every weekend, maybe that's your time to decompress, you know, for manifestors, we definitely need our decompression time um, to be able to create that balance. So I think that's what it was for me, it was creating that boundaries and creating that spaciousness for self care, amongst all that I was doing that allowed me to make make it all work in the season that I was in. Totally. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, that your manager quit and that you ended up resigning because what happened for me was my, uh, so I resigned. I finally made the decision to be yeah. like, I'm not signing a contract, told my manager, we were basically like a two person team. Uh, and a week to the day after I resigned, he resigned because oh, wow. he actually another role at like another institution and obviously we, no one knew because he was in the interview process oh. so I dodged like the biggest bullet ever because I would have been working like two jobs wow. <laughs> and I had already done his job for him before like when he yeah. went on the secondment and I knew it was not like I did not want a managerial role so it was like a the biggest confirmation in that scariest moment of my life, like having taken this leap that I was not prepared for, that it was like, mm-hmm. no, you, you did the right thing, right? So that's also yeah. sometimes really nice when you get that com- confirmation from yeah. the universe. 
it might not always happen that soon. It might happen months later, but I feel like when you do follow your intuition, those synchronicities and those like affirmations and those confirmations come through. So, yeah. I we have so much in common. Every time we talk, we learn more and more about how our paths are going. I love it. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> So uh, I wanted to actually maybe jump topics a little bit, still related to what we were talking about at the beginning of um, the episode, but, you know, speaking with respect to this sort of like ancestral lineage and maybe some of the familial conditioning, uh, that's something that I've really deeply been connecting with lately uh, because actually I had uh, kind of a crazy experience lately where my, so my grandma passed away last uh, spring and I went to like I, I managed to, to make it to Croatia in time and like said bye to her and I hadn't seen her in quite a few years before that and we've spent most of my life living uh, you know countries apart she's lived in Croatia I've lived most of my life here in Canada but over the last few months and obviously especially when I was there in Croatia like I felt very connected to her but over the last few months she's been sort of really popping up into my head and like I've woken up in the middle of the night sometimes and like kind of felt like she was there and I don't have like any gifts so to say in terms of like mediumship or anything but I can definitely sense a presence sometimes um and I had this moment just this past weekend in I was teaching a yoga class and one of my students who is a regular so you know I know her fairly well <laughs> she just came up to me after class and was like I have a message for you like you have a visitor and she kind of took me aside and was like, there's this older woman, you know, she looks like this and she's, she basically like shared her message with me. And I was like, it's gotta be my grandma. Like, I don't know who else it would be. And so anyway, we ended up doing a session and it, it was my grandma and it is her and she's around and she's been around me and been trying to kind of like reach out to me and connect with me. But I guess I haven't been as open <laughs> and so she had to go to my student um, and basically she, her whole message was like you you're the cycle breaker like you are this is your job this is the job that you felt for a long time but you didn't know what it was kind of mm -hmm. like you're here to help women you know in this similar position and I'm here leading the charge and essentially like we are all here behind you, backing you on this mission and supporting you. Right. So wow. I think <laughs> like it was it was crazy and uh, like so grateful to my student for, you know, saying something and for the session that we had together. She's she's amazing. But on that kind of theme of because it sounds like we come from a similar background, right? Yes. European immigrant parents. Think there's specific maybe like even traumas that are inherited through that lineage limiting beliefs blocks like all of these things that come up when we are taking this really brave path of like doing things out of what's normal right so what are maybe some of the things if you if you'd be open to sharing mm. that came up for you on this journey around these themes that I've that, that I've been speaking with about yeah yeah, that's so beautiful that she came through. And I'm so glad that your student was able to give you that that powerful message. It's so powerful. It's interesting, again, funny enough, another similarity. So like when I was going through this transformational journey, I was seeing the number five everywhere, seeing a Robin everywhere. I went to a, a medium and she said, that's your grandfather that is speaking to you through all of these messages. So I felt very like supported in that journey and that transition. And I ended up getting a tattoo of a Roman numeral number five. And funny enough, his name is Vito. So it was funny. It's almost like I have him there with me. Um, so in terms of how that affected, I think, well, I have an Italian background. There's this people pleasing kind of um, belief that you always make your parents happy. You follow the path that's destined. Um, and it's interesting because my grandparents came here. They worked in factories. They hustled, they did everything that they could. So my dad was the first one to get the education in the family, right? But yet my dad is very much a big dreamer. He actually is an author. He had a book. So it's interesting that like he, he started to fulfill their dreams 
they wanted me to do the same. And I was trying my best to please them in a part of my story, but I knew there was something more and I had to step into those dreams. And it, one of the biggest things when I was making this transition was overcoming the people pleasing. Um, and I think that that's a big thing for a lot of people in millennials specifically, um, especially here in Canada and the US, you know, that we are this generation that's seeing more than doctor, lawyer, you know, um, teacher type of traditional um, roles when it comes to career and stepping outside of it. But I find with the clients that I speak to too, it is there's a lot of deconditioning when it comes to people pleasing um, in that process of really stepping into that idea of what fulfillment could mean to them, whether it's career, whether it's getting married later in life than we society tells us we're supposed to or not have kids or have kids later. So I think in terms of breaking the cycle, being I am a fellow cycle breaker, just as you are um, in that process. But I think that that was what uh, one really big thing that I had to overcome on the path to entrepreneurship was the people pleasing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, as your Libra moon too, like that's such a, that's such a big shadow signature of Libra energy in general. And I think especially with uh, you being a cancer son too, like just being so empathetic and attuned to other people's needs and emotions. And then Libra being so focused on the other, so focused on maintaining harmonious relationships that that especially comes up, you know, with our parents because they're our primary relationship when we're growing up. Right. And so we're, we essentially, if we uh, get the sense that like, we're not going to get our needs met, if we don't do what they want us to do, then of course we do what they want us to do, right? Uh, yeah, I love, I've been reading Gabor Mate's book, uh, The Myth of Normal. Mm -hmm. And he talks a lot about uh, in his work, like attachment versus authenticity. Mm. So basically how we trade our authenticity in our early years to have attachment to our parents. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of like the scales are always tipping in favor of one or the other. So that really reminds me of that, especially that Libra moon energy. And also currently uh, the South node being in Libra. Mm. So the South node being the things that we are collectively releasing is people pleasing essentially wow. on, various, <laughs> on various levels and learning how to maintain our individuality and our authenticity within relationships and maybe having to release relationships that don't allow for that. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Relate to that also, <laughs> but I think oh, everyone yeah. probably can just because of the collective energy we're feeling right now. Well, a lot of the constructs in society that are, are coming down and falling apart now um, even this being like a seven year, right. And the spiritual awakening of the planet and more and more people waking up. I think it's a, it's a very pivotal time in history for all of us to step into those fulfilling paths and break those ancestral roles and, you know, step into the higher timelines and the higher self perspectives to be able to navigate this time. So it's a really pivotal time in history. That's what I've been channeling down a lot lately now uh, for me and for all my clients to step into our missions more because this is like such a pivotal time and we're we're here we're incarnated in this moment in time for a greater purpose so it's giving ourselves permission to step into it fully it, it's it's really empowering and exciting and scary for people that have to bust through all those blocks on the way but that's why people like you and I are here to help them to do that right for sure and I think like those blocks are I mean, you're going to peel back the layers on them throughout your whole life. You're never going to be fully healed. So you might as well start now, right? Mm -hmm. Because the longer you keep them buried, the longer you don't address them, the longer you don't look at the things you don't want to look at, the bigger it, they kind of get, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And they and then they're harder to also overcome because they almost like expand. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think, uh, we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, I would love to open the floor to anything else that you might want to share along the lines of what we've been discussing. Is there anything that you're kind of, uh, yeah, maybe getting a, a ping about to, to talk about, or even just where people can find you, your services, things like that. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, this is a really pivotal time, like we were just talking about in history. There's lots of people waking up. There's a lot of people that are seeing that there is more for them. So if you are feeling that curiosity, it's totally scary. I've been there. I've done a lot of inner work on myself to be able to overcome it, seek support in that process and really deeply go within and understand what are some of those things that spark curiosity for you. If it's helping people, what does that look like? If you feel connected to animals, what could that be? If whatever that is, lean into that curiosity, say yes to it, go and explore it, have fun in the process and allow it to unfold. And uh, this is a very pivotal time. And if you're wanting additional support, I'm here. She's going to leave all the links, I'm sure, for all the ways to connect. Um, um, and yeah, thank you for this opportunity. It's been so fun. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And yeah, I can't agree more. I think uh, when you're at a loss for kind of what the next step is, it's always, I think, personally, to like follow what sparks joy, right? Like, follow your passions, reconnect with the inner child. Like, what did you love doing when you were a kid? And it might not have a specific goal right now. But as long as like you said, if you keep that kind of nine to five, or you keep that secure income coming, you can hopefully free up some time and space and finances to do the things that you that, that feel fulfilling. And who knows where that'll lead to, right? Like, that's how I ended up doing astrology and all of the things that I do. So I love that advice. Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. And for anyone who wants to get in touch with Cassandra, I'm going to put all the links in the show notes so you'll be able to find her website and Instagram there. Uh, and yeah, feel free to reach out and ask any questions or give us your comments on what you loved about this episode. Yes, please. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye.